The Black Sea bumping incident of 12 February 1988 occurred when American cruiser USS Yorktown tried to exercise the right of innocent passage through Soviet territorial waters in the Black Sea during the Cold War. The cruiser was bumped by the Soviet frigate Bezovetny with the intention of pushing Yorktown into international waters. This incident also involved the destroyer USS Karen, sailing in company with USS Yorktown and claiming the right of innocent passage, which was intentionally shouldered by a Soviet Merca class frigate SKR-6. Yorktown reported minor damage to its hull, with no hulling or risk of flooding. Karen was not damaged. At the time, the Soviet Union recognized the right of innocent passage for warships in its territorial waters solely in designated sea lanes. The United States believed that there was no legal basis for a coastal nation to limit warship transits to sea lanes only. Subsequently, the U.S. Department of State found that the Russian language text of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, Article 22, Paragraph 1 allowed the coastal state to regulate the right of innocent passage whenever necessary, while the English language text did not. Following the incident, the Soviet Union expressed a commitment to resolve the issue of innocent passage in Soviet territorial waters. Background In 1979, the United States launched an informal program to promote the "...rights and freedoms of navigation and overflight guaranteed to all nations under international law." The U.S. government said that it initiated the program because some countries were beginning to assert jurisdictional boundaries beyond traditional claims. The United States wished to stop this and, it said, diplomatic protests had seemed to be ineffective. A new customary international law could emerge if nations avoided operating their ships and aircraft in the disputed areas, and the U.S. saw this as undesirable. In the 1980s, U.S. warships were passing through the Straits from the Mediterranean into the Black Sea two or three times a year to show the flag and to claim the right of innocent passage in the coastal states. Aside from the right of free passage, U.S. naval activity in the Black Sea served the purpose of upholding U.S. rights under the 1936 Montreux Convention regarding the regime of the Straits. According to a U.S. government official, the Dardanelles and the Bosporus form an international waterway under that convention and, if you don't periodically reaffirm your rights you find that they're hard to revive. Meanwhile, the rules of navigation and sojourn of foreign warships in the territorial waters and internal waters and ports of the USSR." Enacted by the Soviet Council of Ministers in 1983, acknowledged the right of innocent passage of foreign warships only in restricted areas of the Soviet territorial waters in the Baltic, Sea of Okhotsk and the Sea of Japan, no sea lanes for innocent passage in the Black Sea were designated. The Soviet vessels and aircraft were routinely dispatched to observe U.S. warships there. In the 1980s, the Soviet Union viewed the U.S. presence in the Black Sea as an attempt to undermine improving Soviet American relations. After the 1986 incident in the Black Sea, involving USS Yorktown and USS Karen, a meeting of the Soviet Defense Council was held later in the same year. At the meeting, the commander-in-chief of the Soviet Navy Vladimir Chernovin offered to Mikhail Gorbachev, Defense Minister Sergei Sokolov, Foreign Minister Eduard Shevardnadze, and other senior officials that intruding foreign warships could be driven from Soviet waters by several means including bumping. <inaudible> incident On 12 February 1988, the Ticonderoga-class cruiser USS Yorktown, and the Spruance-class destroyer USS Karen, conducted an innocent passage exercise in the Black Sea. Karen passed 7.5 miles 12 kilometers off the Soviet shore, and Yorktown drew to 10.3 miles 16.5 kilometers offshore. The commander of the Black Sea Fleet Mikhail Kronopulo received an order from Chernovin to curb the passage of U.S. warships. Initially the destroyer Krasnyi Kavkaz was tasked with confronting them, but she experienced technical problems so Bezovetnyi, a Krivak-class frigate, was dispatched instead. However, according to Bezovetnyi's commander, Captain Vladimir Bogdashin, his ship had two cruise missiles instead of four, was half the size of Yorktown, and was only a third its size by displacement. 
The Soviet frigate SKR-6, commanded by Captain Anatoly Petrov, was approximately one quarter the size of USS Karen. First, Karen was approached by the frigate SKR-6, and three minutes later, Yorktown was approached by the frigate Bezovetnyi, while Tupolev Tu-16 bombers monitored the vessel's movements. As the U.S. warships clipped a corner of the Soviet territorial waters, they were bumped. At 10.02 a.m., local time, 44 degrees 15.2 and 33 degrees 35.4 e, 10.5 nautical miles from the coast, SKR-6 bumped the port side aft of Karen at frame about 60 feet 18 meters from the bow. Karen received superficial scraping of paint, with no personnel injuries. Bezovetnyi, having bumped Yorktown, was ordered to move away and not to contact her again. Both U.S. warships stayed on even course after the incident. Karen left Soviet territorial waters at 11.50 a.m. local time without further incident. Both U.S. warships reported the incident to the Commander-in-Chief of United States Naval Forces in Europe. Karen reported that, at 13.20 local time, it was informed on Channel 16 VHF by Bezovetnyi. Soviet ships have orders to prevent violation of territorial waters, extreme measure is to strike your ship with one of ours. The reply of Karen was. I am engaged in innocent passage consistent with international law." Yorktown, in its report stated that on 9.56, local time, it was contacted by Bezovetnyi via Channel 16 and told to leave Soviet territorial waters or, "...our ship is going to strike on yours." Then, according to the report, Bezovetnyi came alongside port side of Yorktown at 10.03 and bumped it by turning into the ship, the starboard anchor of Bezovetnyi was torn away. Two harpoon missile canisters on Yorktown sustained damage when Bezovetnyi's bullnose passed down port quarter. Bezovetnyi then cleared to port and took station 300 yards 100 meters off the port beam of Yorktown. Bezovetnyi required a minor repair. Response <inaudible> 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 The Soviet Ministry of Defense issued a statement blaming the U.S. warships for ignoring the warning signals of Soviet border guard ships and for dangerously maneuvering in Soviet waters. The incident also drew a diplomatic protest from the U.S. government. These incidents were covered in the annual review of compliance with the U.S. Soviet Agreement on the Prevention of Incidents on and Over the High Seas signed on 25 May 1972. References Bibliography Kroska, James, Pedrozo, Raúl International Maritime Security Law. Martinus Nyhoff Publishers. ISBN 9004233571.